me, 42 male, with my son Roger, 16 male, has started wearing face paint anytime he goes out and has started hanging out with a girl. That's a bad influence. This is OKOP, home of the craziest stories on earth. I'm Sam and Sophia. What would you do for this face paint wearing girl with bad influence hanging out son? Wait, what? Who's wearing face paint? The son or the girl? The son. Okay, maybe he's just like in like goth. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> Riley actually went out to a party with us yeah. with face paint. We went to emo night. We oh, didn't. Yeah. yeah. Okay, unless you put on more face paint, Riley didn't have face paint on his face. Oh, he, oh, he had, he he had, had like, eyeshadow. He had eyeshadow. That's not face paint. I've never had that much makeup on. Face ever. paint is much different. Um, eyeshadow is makeup. Face paint is paint like paint or i wonder what it i want to know what it looks like you know all right well anyway. i'm thinking like the full-on like clown kind of style emo oh clown that's what emo, i'm thinking. like that yeah. what, what that one juggalo the juggalo uh conference or something or the clown clown something it's like this like rock band thing i don't know anyway yeah this comes from sun is a juggalo oh oh i was right i was what right is a juggalo uh i know what a juggalo is if, uh, <laughs> juggalo is like 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 goth clown. Yeah, insane oh. clown posse. That's what it is. Breezy Bree 8. Insane cl clown posse. Interesting. So a few months ago, my son started failing classes. Since school just got over, he failed two classes. The kid has gotten A's and B's up until a few months ago. Around this same time, he started hanging out with some girl from school. I don't know what the kids call it these days, but she wears a lot of baggy clothing and pale makeup and wears ICP shirts every time I've seen her. What's ICP? I, I've, I've heard of ICUP, where it's like spill ICUP and it's like ICUP. What's ICP? Oh, Insane Clown Posse. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Insane Clown Posse. We've already yeah. established this. Let's I know. Ahead. I know. I forgot. Well, I just asked you what it was. No, no, no. I know. I said I, we just forgot oh, yeah, immediately. Yeah, we just forgot. Yeah. I was a collective. So I Google it. I found that there is a culture around this band and they call themselves Juggalos. I found a lot of negative stuff about Juggalos. So naturally, I was concerned. Some even consider it a gang. Is that true? Is it a gang? Is this like a negative thing? I don't really know a lot about it. Or is I, it just yeah, is like it negative? pals Can having tell fun, us? like uh, dressing yeah, up it, as clowns? Is it just clowns having fun? Yeah. I think my son is in love with her because he now always paints his face before he goes out. With the exception of when he was going to school. He had about $500 saved up. I guess he went out and bought all of these insane clown posse shirts and hats. So man's in deep. Yeah, and then a lot of people are saying that the band is pretty chill, but the like the fans are a little bit are are a little crazy. Yeah, is anyone an insane clown posse fan and like knows about it? Uh, Make it matter says the band can be a little intense, but I like them. Some people blow it way out of proportion. I, it's that's what it kind of sounds like. Be beyond the the sun kind of failing in some classes, it sounds like he's just. Vi like he's just vibing. He's vibing he's out. Vibing. I mean, he but he is fa failing classes. So yeah, that's but not that's good. like that's a thing that you have to address. Address separately. I brought this up with my son and asked him if he was on drugs. Oh my god! Which I feel like okay. So she just sounds a little dramatic. I mean, that's. I feel like that's every mom. Yeah. Literally, I would drugs? come home surfing. Yeah, from, like and like and my yeah. and my eyes would be bloodshot because yeah. of of the salt water. The salt water, and my mom would be like, "Are you on drugs, Sam?" Yeah, she never asked me that. Yeah, she always asked me that. And literally, I'm like, Mom, I tell you every time I do drugs. It's true. I literally, like, I did acid the other day. And then she's like, And she's like, what? stop telling me. Stop telling me that. And I'm like, yeah. Mom, do you want yeah, me to? Yeah, we're like two sides of the same. Sam tells our parents everything, and I don't tell my parents. Two weeks after he started dressing this way, he told me to mind my own business and slammed his bedroom door in my face. If I ever talked to my dad that way, I got smacked upside the head. But these days, it's considered child abuse, so I didn't do much <laughs> at this point. These days, these hitting days. children is considered child abuse. <laughs> I waited a few days and tried to talk to him about it again. This time, he told me that I was being dumb and that he wasn't doing drugs. I asked him who he was wearing the face paint for. He told me that it was no different than me wearing Kiss makeup when I went to one of their concerts years ago. Wait, so this is in that runs in the family? <laughs> it runs in the family. It runs in the family. Yeah, that's not different. I told him that I was going to a concert, not going to the grocery store to buy a gallon of milk. Okay, is he going well, in full makeup yeah, to buy a gallon of milk? Yeah, he said anywhere but school, he's going in this makeup. That's kind of sick. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a lifestyle. It's, it's a life. Mom, you don't understand. It's, it's a face. lifestyle. Yeah. The argument really didn't get anywhere, and I decided to let it go. This was until we went out for our yearly Mother's Day dinner. Oh, no. <laughs> We usually go to a decent restaurant, and this year, we decided to go to Macaroni Grill. Well, my son decided he was going to wear his face paint 
and insane clown posse clothes to this dinner. Oh. What do you think, Sophia? Okay, is it you too know much? what? No, okay. Obviously, look like if I were a parent, I'd be like, this is, this is a lot. But he's not hurting anyone. He's not hurting he's anyone. He's not hurting anyone. He's not. But like, there are dress codes that you should. Yeah, but I don't know. You can't, you can't tell a child. You can't like tell a child what to wear. Can you not? No. Like, Mom I, did I, that I, all the time. <laughs> Mom dressed me. Oh, I have pictures of like me wearing outfits and I, I'm like, why did you let me wear this? And she's <laughs> like, you picked it out. I guess that mom didn't, did let me wear a lot of skater clothes. But yeah. if we were ever at a fancy dinner, she was like, wear yeah, something nice. Sure. Or like going to church or but something. But it seems like he's rebelling and I feel like he's not going to be receptive to like. Change your clothes. Yeah. Yeah. I think healthy parenting, you got to like, got to be like, hey, are you sure you want to wear sure? that? Yeah, you, you can come out like that. Yeah, yeah. You can come out like that, but like it's, you know, you might not be received well. I feel like you can tell them like, you're like, hey, at this dinner, this is the dress code. If you want to wear that, but that this is the but dress code. But what if they kick you out for the dress code? Then you. Because like there's certain places where you he have to. in the car. <laughs> he waits in the car. <laughs> But know. she wants to spend time with her son. I don't know. I like uh, maybe just take him to a insane. Uh, I don't think it's bad to want people to wear like a nice outfit out. But I, I don't right. think it's I don't think he's if you're inviting well. people to a wedding. Yeah. Right. And there's a certain dress code to the wedding and someone wears the insane clown posse. <laughs> I would be outfit. like, why are they wearing that? But I'm not going to like call them out on it. But it, 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 why, then why have a dress code if someone's going to? I don't know. It's not that I don't think that you can. It's more so like I don't think he's going to listen. Like it's going to be a big old fight. Yeah. Let's get back into it. Yeah. So they went to this macaroni grill place. I told him uh, that it wasn't the circus and we were celebrating his mother. He got very upset and yelled some profanity at me about how I'm a horrible father. I Wait, don't know. Father? Yes, the father. Oh, I don't know okay. if I was in the wrong here, so let me know what you guys think. Because of this argument, we didn't go to the dinner. I feel horrible about it for my wife's sake, and I did make it up to her the next day, but that isn't relevant to the issue at hand. So, up until last week, my son and I have little contact, and when I would try to talk to him, he gave me the silent treatment. This last weekend, I found something no father wishes to ever find. Oh, yikes. Call me a bad father for snooping, but I did. He was out doing his thing with this girl, and I wanted to see if he had any drugs in his room. I thought maybe I would find some pot. If I did, I would confiscate it and ground him for a few weeks. But what I found was a white powdery substance in a small Ziploc bag. I knew exactly what this was. I had a cocaine problem before I met my wife, uh. so I knew what it looked like. To make sure I was headed in the right direction, I smelled the bag. And then just did a line for good measure. No, it was definitely cocaine. Obviously, being a former addict, I didn't want to taste it to be 100% sure. I went and talked with my wife, and she was shocked. We didn't know what to do. Yeah. Okay, okay. So at this point, right? Now they're being proven right. At this point, at this point, yes. what would you do? At What's the talk point, that you have? As Chumpa says, yeah. yeah, time for the talk. But what, yeah. what does the talk I think at like? the point of... of uh, the son swearing and stuff. I think that's that's when you're like, that's hey, crossing this is a boundary. Yeah. You're not being yes. respectful. Yeah, I think before it was like just you know wearing what he wants to wear, but now it's swearing at your parent, and now it's doing like hard drugs. So at this point, I think you have to talk to your son and be like, hey, this is a very I've dealt like, and also the dad can be like, I've dealt with this before. Yeah. I know exactly. I know what how this addictive does. it is. Yeah. Op is forty two. And the son is 16. I mean, I feel like that's around when like some kids start. Yeah, well, when it's yeah, it drugs. can be introduced to you. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, no, I think, I at think that point, you have to definitely have to talk to them depending you, on how you far ground gone. Them? I think a grounding or maybe like definitely. I feel like you have to go to a doctor, therapist, something like that. Yeah. Some kind and then of, someone you know, said, uh, yeah, Chumpa says addiction is also genetic. Exactly. That's what I was going to say. If the father was already d addicted to cocaine, it could you know, it could make um, the likelihood that the son is going to be very addicted. All right, wait, but we do have some conspiracy theories. So I didn't even think about this, but someone on YouTube, Janae Masco says, it's not drugs. And someone else said, it's just the paint in powder form. What do we think? Oh... I think it's still drugs. I think it's still drugs. It is so interesting. But it totally that would that would be the lie that I would tell yeah. to cover it up. I feel like it's paint. The only reason I don't think that is because the dad was addicted. And yeah, he and he's like, I know yeah. cocaine and I smelt it. Yeah, but he didn't taste it. So. He didn't taste it. He didn't taste it. You could be. But let's see. Let's go back to reality and see, see what right. actually happened. So yeah. hours later, my son showed up with this girl. I called him out about what I found and he completely lost it. And told me I had no right to go through his things. 
I realize I might be a horrible father for this, but I would be even more horrible if he had died from an overdose because like fentanyl yeah. and shit is going around. Yeah, no, that's you know? really scary. He didn't even deny it. After his yelling was finished, I asked the girl to leave and that this was a family matter. Yeah. My son told me to F off and took her to his room. No. My wife was crying and I was, it took a lot not to sl- hop him across the head, but I maintained myself and didn't yeah. resort to that, which is good. Yeah. It was good. What I did next is what I feel was the best thing I could do. Tell me if y'all think this is a good move. Court the Brave said, call the police now. Yeah. I called the police on them. Mm-hmm. My wife is still very upset with me for this, but I didn't see another way to help him out short of physically forcing his girlfriend and him to stay. Mm-hmm. The cops came, found that he had some pot. The girl was asked to leave, and my son was told if he tried to leave, they, the cops, would take him to the youth detention center for a few days. Wow. Maya 212 says the dad seems like a violent person, though. I don't know if that's necessarily true, but I think like when you maybe grew up with your parents hitting you, like that's like yeah. your first response. And it sounds like he's not doing that, you know? Yes. I think, yeah, I think, it, yeah, he said that he did not hit his children. Yeah. I think calling the cops is excessive. I though. think, th- I, yeah. I think there's ways but to But again, I think it is excessive, but also like what do you – like what was the right thing to do? Not saying that it was right to call the cops, but like what do, what do you do when you find drugs and, and you're trying not to like hit your child? And you can't – like you want to – And you don't want to like pull, pull out – like you drag his girlfriend out. You know, like what what is yeah. the course of action that you do? What do you guys think? Call the her girlfriend. parents maybe? If you, but if you physically move the girlfriend, she could say like assault. Yeah. Oh, right? no. I, no, you cannot touch them, I think. Yeah, that's hard. A lost galaxy. I think it's just the dad has been through being yeah. a druggie and wants to make sure his kid doesn't follow those th- footsteps. Yeah. yeah, I agree. Fairy Love says my whole family is full of addicts. If I ever did the hard ones like my family, I'd probably want the cops call to me just so the addiction yeah. doesn't get worse. Um, there, yeah, there's not much he can do as someone who was addicted. I think he's like realizing yeah. I need to get my like I need to shock my son out of this. Yeah. And yeah, like kicking him out is not going to help him. Sam, when I was a kid, I used to go to camp. How was it? It was fire. Were you safe? I was so safe, except for one day. What happened? It was the first day I was ever stung by a bee. Uh. And uh, I was lost. I didn't want to interrupt things. I didn't know what to do. I didn't have like a kind of discreet place where I could like go on my phone and like find help. Yeah, yeah. I wish there was a place that could offer help to bee sting individuals or a person who's going through any kind of medical emergency or medical issue at all. What what could possibly have helped me, Sam? ZocDoc. You're right. ZocDoc is a free app and website where you can search and compare highly rated in-network doctors near you and instantly book appointments with them online. And all these doctors have actual reviews from real verified patients. We're talking about booking appointments with tens of thousands of top rated patient reviewed credible doctors and specialists. You can filter for ones that take your insurance and treat basically any condition you're searching for. The typical wait time to see a doctor on ZocDoc is only 24 to 72 hours. Sometimes even the same day. Y'all, we all use ZocDoc and you should too. Go to ZocDoc.com slash OKOP and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top rated doctor today. That's Z-O-C, D-O-C dot com slash O-K-O-P, doc, doc, doc com slash O-K-O-P. Back to the show. Well, since all of this, my son has been grounded and is not allowed to see this girl. That's good. It's easy for me to blame it all on the girl, but I am sure I failed somewhere for my son to act this way. I can't, I don't think you can blame it all yeah, on no, yourself. I think it's, you know? yeah. Apparently, he's talking to my wife and asked her about going to some festival juggalos in ICP has. I looked it up and it sounds like bad news. Yeah. My wife said he could go without talking to me. I'm at a loss at what? this point. Did the mom was like, you can go without. Yeah. Like the mom is like, still take him to the, the concert. But I feel like probably no. If it no. seems like this environment I would not, is not no. good for him. I would not allow. Also, it seems like they're go- he would be going alone. I think they would be going together and they would go without talking to him, to, to his son. No, no, no. From what I not talking, uh, the mom said we, you could go without talking to OP. Like oh. running it by it by OP. Yeah. Oh, my wife said he could yeah. go without talking to me. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah. That's not cool. No. That's not cool. Like that's not gonna help your son like get the help he needs. Exactly. I am at a loss at this point. While I want my son to experience life, he seems to be headed down a dangerous road, and yeah. my wife is enabling it. Yeah. 
I did talk to my wife about it. And all she can say is that this is our way of making up for calling the cops on him. But he was... No. No. Like that needed no. to happen. That needed yeah. to happen. Mm -mm. Can someone who has had troubled youths give me some pointers here? If I am going to about it wrong, I would appreciate your input. What would you guys do? And there is a big update. But what do you think, Fio? Do you like, like what would, what would your advice be? I don't know. Yeah. That's really hard. I think that, that, yeah, someone said, um, the wife and OP need to get on the same page because they're going about it in a completely different way. Yeah. And I feel like this is just, you know, it's going to hurt the son. I think like they're, it, it feels like they're not, they're a little bit too lax with him. Yeah. I feel like that's what it feels like. But there is a thick, juicy update. First off, I got a lot of different advice and some personal messages from a number of people. Some of the advice has been helpful, some of it not so much. There was a particular user that said I was a piece of shit and de didn't deserve children. Ooh. I don't believe anything I said warranted such an accusation. Either way, thanks to everyone for the advice. Mm -hmm. Anyway, now for the update. So I showed my wife some of the responses on this thread. She was annoyed at first that I let strangers in on our problem, but seemed okay with it once she was done going through your responses. She was very shocked about what goes on at the festival she had agreed to let my son go. We watched a couple of videos posted and she was horrified by the drug bridge the most. What's the yeah. drug bridge? We agreed that my son would not be able to go without adult supervision. As for my wife and I not being on the same page, she agrees with myself and some of you that we need couples therapy to see if yeah. we can figure out a better resolution to disagreements about our children. I made the appointment this morning as I didn't want to wait until we just decided we didn't need it. Some of you probably know how that goes. One user sent me a personal message who had actually gone on a tour as a supporting band member, I believe. At some point with the ICP, uh, which is the Insane Clown Posse, and had some interesting and good insight on them. I won't go into who it was, but he was pretty decent sounding guy. And I realized that the problem here has little to do with the music my son is listening to. Yeah. It is more about something he is going through and we need to figure out that and help him with it. Yeah. I really don't think it's like the necessarily the band and like being into that. I think it's just like they're rebelling. Yeah. Now for our son. After my wife and I talked about the situation, we decided it'd be best if we had a friendly conversation with our son. One that would not include yelling for my wife or myself, even if our son raised his voice. We were going to tell him our decision on the concert and see if we could find some common ground on a few other issues. So last night we sat him down when we had gotten back from hanging with his female friend. She came with him as she needed to grab something that was in his room. She had a DVD case in her hand when she left, so I'm assuming that is all it was. Before she left, I did apologize to her about yelling at her the other day. I didn't apologize about calling the cop. I know there are mixed feelings on this. To be clear, I flushed the cocaine before the police arrived and had oh. no idea that my son had pot in him. Oh. I initially called the cops because his friend refused to leave. I had no intention of having anyone arrested. Oh, so that, I just wanted oh, wow. someone who I asked, well, yell that to leave, but they didn't. It is possible if I spoke calmly with her when I asked her, it would have worked out better for all of us. Oh, okay. That actually does change a lot because I feel like a lot of people were upset about him like calling the, you know. The cops on his son and getting yeah, arrested. Yeah, but the cocaine but yeah, wasn't, wasn't there. Yeah, it yeah. wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't supposed to be a drug. It was. Yeah, that yeah. that that wasn't the reason. It yeah. was to like evict someone yes. from his place. That yeah. makes a lot more sense. Anyway, back to the point. So she seemed a bit surprised, as did her son. She left shortly after, and that is when we asked her son if we could have a chat. He resisted at first and tried to walk away, but I said, "Please, son, I just want to talk. I'm not going to yell. I just want to know what I can do to be a better father." Oh, that's really sweet. That's really sweet. I feel like this is a dad yeah. trying his best. Yes. It worked, even if he looked annoyed. Before I got into the drug use or the uh, insane clown posse and face paint stuff, I asked him if he was all right. I asked him if he needed to talk to someone, therapist, me, his mother. He kind of just sat there. My wife asked him the same thing with a different phrasing to see if she could get him to open up. At this point, he started to tear up and I could tell he wanted to say something. I shut my mouth though and continued to let my wife work on him, opening him up. Since we have been clashing, I didn't want to ruin this opportunity. This is really cute. This yeah. is like, this is really, this is like, I think how parenting should yeah. be done. After a few minutes, he basically started saying he was having a hard time about his friend's death. Oh, we didn't know that. I won't go into many details, but he said he had stopped going to the therapist before. He just didn't feel like it was helping. All this time, my wife and I thought he had moved forward with that. Oh. Yet he was still trying to work through it. Oh. He cried. My wife cried. I cried. It's so sad. We all cried, and after several months of him not allowing me to hug him, he let me. 
It was a hug that lasted for a few minutes. I felt like I had my son back and that he had me back as well. From everyone's comments, I really needed to realize that while I am not a bad father, I needed to work on being better. I feel like this was a good first step. <laughs> so after this part of our conversation, we got onto the other serious issues such as the drug use. I asked him why he had cocaine in his room. He then said I shouldn't have gone through his stuff and that I needed to respect his privacy. I told him I was only concerned for him and that was the only reason I did it. I told him that cocaine is a dangerous drug and that I know that from personal experience. He seemed taken back by this and gave me a confused look. I told him that I had a drug problem, specifically cocaine. It's really cool that he's opening up. Yeah. And explained how messed up I was before I got help and before I met his mother. He looked shocked that I could relate to him in regards to drug use. I told him I just wanted to make sure he was safe. I asked him how long he was doing it. And to my surprise, he said he has never done it. He told us that it wasn't his. He said that it was a friend of his, not the girl, but in the same circle of friends. And they gave it to him and it was pressuring him into trying it, but he hadn't had a desire to try it. I calmly asked him if his friend was a drug dealer. For me, that was the only thing that made sense on why he would try to get my son hooked on such an expensive and very dangerous drug. Of course, the answer was yes. At this point, I didn't have a reason not to believe him because he was being very open about everything. I did, however, ask him if he would do a random drug test if I asked him. He said yes, but it would show that he has only been smoking pot. Yeah. It is a relief knowing that he wasn't doing cocaine. I can deal with the pot a lot easier than having to get him off cocaine. After discussing this, my wife and I were both still pretty calm, so we moved to the final part of our conversation, the insane clown posse issue, <laughs> which is like such a funny <laughs> return to it. Um, oh my god yeah aj wow. says op is breaking my heart yeah trump has said third try i'm so glad he opened up about his yeah. addiction yeah yeah i like that i just kept trying and i think that's what yeah. you gotta do my wife started this part by apologizing to me for giving the okay to let him go to the festival she then pulled up one of the videos on her ipad and handed it over to him she told him to watch it i think he knew where this was headed because he looked kind of upset after the video, she then told him that we both decided it was not a good idea for him to go to this festival without an adult. He was upset, no yelling at first, but I had one last idea to maybe get him to understand why. I pulled up the personal message from the guy from a band that turned with ICP and let him read it. Apparently, he knew of the band and the guy, and this got through to him better than my wife or I could. So this is because it was posted to Reddit. Wow. Because like someone from the insane yeah. clown posse band was like, let me speak it. to this kid. Oh, wow. My wife and I agreed that depending on his reaction, we could try to work it out to a maybe my son and I would go for a day. There were a few factors that we needed to work out for this to happen. When we told him this, he took it better than we thought. He did ask if he could take his girlfriend, found out that they were dating at this moment. We said that we would have to speak with his girl's parents and get to know her better. We agreed to that, and I am currently trying to work the concert part out. Many might disagree with me, but if I am there, I can make sure that him and his girlfriend aren't getting into any trouble. Now we understand that not all insane clown posse culture is bad, so we are compromising with him a bit on the face paint and the music part of it. We asked if he would consider not wearing the face paint all the time when we go out. We explained that while it doesn't embarrass us, it does cause a distraction. He agreed that when we go to family functions or dinners, he would not wear it, but would still most likely wear the shirts. We thought it was a good compromise. Things are headed in a positive direction, and my relationship with my son has gotten better over the last 24 hours. There are still some things to work out, but I appreciate everyone's input on this, even if it was calling me a piece of shit parent. <laughs> I hope that after some time, he will try to stay away from these bad influences in his life like his drug dealing friend. My hope is that once I give his girlfriend a chance and stop judging her simply from the insane clown posse culture that I can actually get to like her. Some of you might be disappointed that I didn't throw him in juvie and make him give up on juggalo culture, but he needs to find himself and I need to do my best to be there for him. He is a good kid that just happened to find himself with the wrong friends i won't consider his girlfriend a bad influence quite yet i need to get to know her better all right let's get into the final update hello again reddit some of you may be interested in knowing how things have been going and if we ended up going to the concert i'll give you some insight on this final update i don't anticipate needing to add any more after this update so i went with the advice to get him back into therapy right away we decided in order for him to get to the concert we needed to get him in there and also give family therapy a try 
The biggest thing we all learn from family therapy is that we lack in communication. While the talk we had in my last update was a good stepping stone, we still have ways to go, but we are headed in the right direction. With time, I think we'll be back to a healthy and trusting relationship. Now for Roger and his girlfriend. I also mentioned that I needed to meet with this girl's parents. It took some convincing, but I was able to go over to her house and have a conversation with her father about a week or so before the concert. Unbeknownst to me, her mother was out of the picture and had been since she was about seven seven or eight. Her house is kind of run down and her father invites me inside. Immediately, I can smell a combination of cigarette smoke and stale beer, which was extremely strong. It was a mess. It looked like someone threw a party and forgot to clean up. I suddenly felt bad for the girl and felt even worse for judging her. She was obviously a victim of a broken home. Despite the conditions, the conversation was productive and we talked about her going to the concert if he was okay with it. He agreed it would be fine, but said he didn't have the money to help out with any of the costs. I said we would take care of it. I was there for less than 10 minutes. Maybe I'm being judgmental of her father but I felt bad and we have had her over for dinner several times a week now. We have learned a lot about her and she is just a damaged youth trying to get by with the hand she was dealt. She hasn't indicated any abuse and she does appear to love her father a lot. She just hasn't really opened up about anything. And short of being suspicious of child abuse, I don't know if it's really our business so we haven't pushed it. Now for the concert. The three of us, son, his girlfriend, and myself, headed to the concert and were planning on being there for two days, the 25th and the 26th. We got there Friday evening and there were people all over the place, all kinds of people. My son and his girlfriend wore face paint, but so was about half the people I saw. I felt out of place, but at the same time, I was glad I didn't let them come alone. The smell of skunk weed was strong right as we walked into the entrance. I saw some people trying to sell drugs, but we pretty much just ignored them. We didn't really have any issues and the two of them enjoyed themselves. I gave them their space and didn't hover, but I did keep an eye on them from a distance. I didn't think being within a few feet of them would have been very encouraging on the progress we had made through therapy. I had to trust them a little bit and know they would make the right choice. Overall, it was a good experience for my son and his girlfriend. It wasn't my type of atmosphere, but I wasn't there for me. I was there to support my son and just to try and be a good father. Thanks for all the advice and we will continue to work on growing a strong foundation as a family. What a lovely story. Story. I, I'm really glad that the father like OP like stepped up and was like, you know I'm gonna have a serious conversation and I'm not gonna yell and it wasn't from a place of like anger It's literally just from a place of like I care for you and I want uh, and the I best for you like love wins yeah, every time. You yeah, know? I mean it, it seems like the son really um, Appreciated it today. I effed up by finding out what my eight-year-old son was saving for deleted says before we start this I want to tell everyone this is a happy today I effed up. When I was a 16 year old, I was stupid. I didn't wear protection and I got a girl pregnant. I was shocked. I never expected having a kid that early and I don't know if I regret it or not. Almost all of my regrets washed away when my first son was born. For privacy purposes, we will call him Rory. I am 24 now and my son is seven, almost eight now. He's the smartest and most loving kid I could ever ask for. His mom had left when he was around two. When I tried to sue for child support, the judge sided with her quoting that I was the father and needed to step up. Ever since then, it has been me and Rory against the world. I was a single dad to Rory from then on. I had a few girlfriends, but nothing serious. I left my parents' place and got a small apartment. I dropped out of high school, which I still immensely regret, but hey, life happened. During this time, my neighbors, God bless them, helped me raise my son. They were an older couple next door whose kids had moved out long before, so they were fine babysitting him after school, late shifts, etc. I'm a manager at McDonald's. I make lousy money, but it was enough to get by. Then two years prior, our shitty building manager raised the rent for everyone, and I had to work even harder for a place to live during a pandemic. My parents had left the state, and I wasn't ready to uplift my and cut my kid's entire le life because his dad couldn't provide for him. Every birthday since before he was three, I believe, I took Rory to Golden Coral, usually on his birthday, but there were more occasions when we went. It was really good for him, and he really enjoyed it. I haven't been able to take him for the past two years due to money being very tight. This is important for later. Sometimes I will get tipped at McDonald's. A quarter here, a dime here, a dollar here and there. I'll bring it to him every day and give it to Rory to save. Oh, he's giving his son tips. That's so cute. Aww. Well, two days ago, Rory brings me his money jug and dumps it all out in front of me. He was so excited and began counting it out. There was around $40 there and he jumped up excitedly. I had asked him, what's up, little buddy? When I tell you guys, my heart broke. My son asked me if it was enough to go to the coral for his birthday. A piece of me shattered inside. I didn't think he remembered the golden corral. I told him we couldn't go to the bank tomorrow and exchange it for cash. That night, I ugly cried in my bedroom. I felt like a failure because I 
couldn't give him everything he's ever wanted. I began researching furthering my education. Well, yesterday, as soon as the bank opened, I took my son and we exchanged the money for cash. I then drove us to Golden Corral and we were, and we were there for two hours. My kid was so happy and I was stupid because I just assumed he forgot this place. We got the all-you-can-eat buffet for two for $30. Today, I cried again in my room. I've never been good at saving money, but his birthday is next month, oh. and I'm going to do my best to take him every few months. Oh. So, other parents have read it. Oh. Can I ask some advice of how you deal with the guilt of having to say no? Oh. Edit one. Also, if anyone asks, I'll post a pic of the coins and the container they were in. He saved them in a cotton candy container from oh. Christmas ago. Oh. Edit two, kids money jug and his coins posted on my profile. Thanks for the gold. This is my first across my two counts. They got three gold. Wow. Now I wish I would have posted this on my main, LOL. Edit five, turning off DMs and replies because I'm getting a lot of trolls. Hope everyone has a great day. The time I found out my family lied to me for 19 years. And this comes from the real angry beeve. You know how after you turn 16, you are so excited to be an adult. I didn't really get that till I moved out. My family was full of lives, half truths, and unresolved issues. Here's the only one of many stories that will haunt my mind. At the age of about five to six, my uncle, my dad's brother, had a court where my first cousin, his son, was one of the witnesses. During this time, to keep me out of this due to my age, I was sent to a birthday party for a friend. Meanwhile, everything in my family's life was changing. I was later informed that my uncle was going to be serving time in prison for selling the devil's lettuce. Not sure if oh. that was all after the 90s or it was in Probably. the early 90s. Yeah. I was told my uncle did admit to selling selling drugs, but the rest was like falsely accused. From then on until age of 16, every other weekend, we would spend time going to prison to visit my uncle, which of course caused me to have a friendship with him. We even became pen pals and wrote letters to each other about things we like to do, like going karting, laser tag, and stuff like that. This continued for many years. And then my family met my now husband. The same was also said about him, my uncle, and we moved on. After getting married, I moved out of state, which happened to be the same time my uncle got out of prison. I never really communicated with him at all back then in 2015. And my husband moved back to the state. And then I hadn't seen my first cousin since the court date, since I was like five or six. I hadn't seen him in about 19 years. My grandparents and parents weren't allowed to see him. And it was all explained that my cousin's mother didn't want to see him at all. My grandparents would still buy Christmas presents for him every year in case we decided to stop by and see him again. It was a touchy subject, but every like but something everybody wanted to do. So basically, the uncle is in prison and everyone's like kind of seeing him but kind of not wanting to as well. Okay. One day, while I'm pregnant, I'm scrolling through Facebook and I see what I believe to be my cousin on Facebook with my heart beating in my throat. I sent him a message because we used to be close. We used to play Batman and Batgirl together and we used to do all the things that little cousins do at a young age, like jump and play Power Rangers. I finally decided that I'm going to send him a message. So I sent him a message stating that I don't know if he remembers me, but I'd love to meet with him and I'd love to know him again, but there were no expectations. To my surprise, he actually replied and said that he would love to meet up and we would meet at a restaurant, bef but beforehand, I called my parents to let them know that I was going to see him, but not tell anyone else because I didn't want to get their hopes up. My dad told me that due to him being with his mother for so long that she probably would give him false information about what happened around the time, mm -hmm. but to believe what he said and take him for what he remembers. So basically, OP is like, am I potentially getting all this false information about my family that mm -hmm. I had no idea about? So here I go with my husband, me, very pregnant, go to meet him for the first time since everything happened. So this is like the first time she's going to see this cousin, like since I think he went to prison. We had a great time talking and conversing until unfortunately the subject of his father came up. My cousin did let me know that the uncle did indeed do everything he was accused of and shared in detail that she doesn't want to share about. My cousin gave me his first hand memory of these events and was very sympathetic and apologetic that I had to find out this way. To put it lightly, if you put his last name in a website for the state, he's the second one on it because I think there was some like uh, um, abuse that happened oh. too. 
I felt like a fool here. I came to see him with these preconceived notions in my head that he's just been fed a bunch of lies. After talking and apologizing profusely for all that he's been through, I offered him if he ever wants to talk to anyone from the family that he is welcome to on any terms and he can use me to do so, but nothing is expected. After coming home from the restaurant, feeling emotionally drained, realizing my uncle was not who I thought he was, I think to call my father to tell him what I've learned. I felt devastated, not just for me, but for my father to learn that his brother was this horrible monster and that he's parading himself to be such a good guy. Because basically he's like, I was innocent of all the abuse stuff yeah. that they convicted me of, uh. but he was not. Cool. I was heartbroken to have to make the phone call. I call my dad in a very soft voice. I say something along the lines of, dad, I talked to my cousin. And uncle did everything. I'm so sorry. My heart was beating. I was terrified how hurt my dad would be. He's a very delicate person to be broken and cry. But to my surprise, he didn't. That's when he told me, OP, when I went to visit your uncle in prison one time, he admitted this to me and your cousin. Oh. And he admitted that what he did was right. Like like that, that it was all true. And so the dad didn't the say anything. Time. Yeah, they didn't say anything. They kind of covered it up. I was shocked. All I could say was, okay. Then made an excuse to get off the phone. How can my father have lied to me all these years about that? How could he knowingly put me in the same room as someone like that to visit a prison? How could he let me have a relationship with someone like this? How could he be spending time with the uncle once he got out of prison? And why was the whole family acting if everything, like as if everything was forgiven? I think like a lot of families probably just like brush these kinds of things under the rug. Yeah. A terrible yeah. thing to do. No, because like, of course, the, like the drug, like this drug stuff is not the like, issue at all. Like the fact that he, you know, people are in jail for that. That's crazy. But to lie, like... Which is my, maybe what OP thought or, you know, OP thought was the only thing that they did wrong. And then to find out that it's just, yeah, yeah, it's terrible. So now the cousin is getting invited to family events and OP asks, I just want to know if I should feel if I'm in the right to keep my children away. Should I top, stop going to all these family events unless I know my uncle is not going to be there? And what are some things I can do to make my cousin mm. know I will always have his back? Aww. So, I don't know. What do you guys think? I think definitely you can create distance with this person. And I think you have to. I think, yeah, showing your support for your cousin is very important. I'm on a trip with a friend and I want to send her home. Cheryl, who goes by Brilliant Argument 98, says, I, 55 female, am on day six of a five-week RV trip with a friend, 49 female, who has health issues including fibromyalgia. You're crushing that. Keep going. Fibromyalgia. That's Sorry, perfect. I don't know what that is. Uh, what is that? Let us know in the that? comments. I am miserable. I am participating in four juried art shows, the first being this coming weekend. Because of my home situation, I am mid-divorce. This trip is do or die for me. It's the difference between me living the life I want to live or did you go back to a grind that I'm not really prepared to go back to? Oh, OP is like living the best So you're life. doing art shows and so this trip is trying to get... Uh, like make them successful, I guess. Like the art show, like, yeah. like they're traveling Promoting with their the art. art shows. Okay, yes, cool. Yeah, yeah. The idea is that being in our RV, we can sleep for free at rest areas, truck stops, etc. In many cases, you can also sleep at Walmart, Cracker Barrel, or Costco parking lots, as long as there's not a city ordinance against it. Another overnight option would be to stay at a campsite. Campsites allow us to hook up to electricity and water, but they often require reservations and cost some money. Because the mileage on the RV is so bad, I'm trying to get as many free overnights as possible. Also, because of the home situation, I had to bring my two late middle-aged dogs with me. She, as in the uh, friend, hates them, of course. The RV has a bathroom, shower, microwave, stove, oven, and several sleeping areas. Okay, that sounds like a sick RV. It sounds fun. Yeah. I'm trying to be understanding and respectful of her health issues. The problem is she is being super demanding, barking orders at me, and expecting me to do everything. She spends literally the entire time that I am driving, laying down, listening to an audiobook because she can't stand my music or podcast choices. Oh, so she's like not even participating not even, why in she, the drive. Yeah, why, why is she, she there? there? I will forgive her if she's listening to our podcast. Yeah, yeah. You <laughs> can only be listening to OKOP. That's it. Only reason. Yeah. Here are some stories. The morning after night one, her, this is the friend, I slept terrible. Terribly me. Why is that? Her. This indicates road noise. That's the road noise. What do you want Cheryl to do? You're you're driving. You're driving. You're, you're driving. You're, you're, also, you're driving. Cheryl is the one driving. And also, you're Cheryl, this is a great story. This I love great. this yeah, story. Yeah, yeah, Thanks yeah, yeah. to the OKOP fam for giving us some yeah. great stories. Wait, I'm gonna make I'm gonna give her a voice. Um I slept terribly. <laughs> I slept terribly. Um, and voice. then and then Cheryl says 
well, I think we should get you some earbuds because I think this is a potential problem anywhere we stay. Facts. Facts. Because you are on a road trip. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we should have gone back to Walmart. The Walmart was closed. Oh, like to sleep? Oh, in? oh, I think, the, okay, they're not driving while they're sleeping. It's just the, the car is passing. Right, right, right. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, yeah. it's going to happen yeah. on a road trip. But yeah. they're, they're like... Uh, uh, to the, sleep. So they go to the Walmart yeah, yeah. parking lot. Yeah. yeah. Um, Cheryl. I'm just saying there could be other places that aren't quiet either, so we should get you something just in case. Yeah. I tried earbuds once, but they messed up my ears, so I won't use them. Sophia uses earplugs all the time. I actually have been trying to use them less um, because Why? they were hurting my ears. <laughs> no, but, but I use them <laughs> like... Yeah, <laughs> you're the problem. <laughs> no, 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 but I used them three That's months so straight funny. when I was traveling because obviously when you're traveling with other people and like hostels, um, they're loud and it's... yeah. If, if you are having trouble sleeping, use earbuds. Yeah. Day two. So we both got little power generators for charging jacks, etc. I charged mine fully before I left, but she did not. Hers came with about 33% charge on it, but that's it. Uh, her. Can we stay at the campground tonight instead of a travel center so that we can be ho fully hooked up? Cheryl. Why don't you just plug it into the cigarette lighter and it'll charge while we drive? Great um, idea. Cheryl always solving problems. Big sigh. She would rather have us find a campground, have me fully hook up the electric instead of her just standing up so that she can grab her cigarette let lighter charger. And the thing is, like, she's not helping at all. No, she's not. She's just sitting on her butt listening to a podcast. Arr, Hopefully OKOP. Okay, OK, yeah. Hopefully <laughs> okay, OKOP. Okay. Earlier, I had been drifting a bit, so I told her I needed to stop and take a rest for about 20 minutes. Next thing I know, can we get going? It's been 45 minutes, and you said you were only going to take 20. My drifting was actually worse after that. Yeah, if you're tired, do not drive. Oh, she's drifting. Driving. Yeah, she's drifting. Because she's tired. Yeah, take it. Like, yeah, that is so dangerous. Oh. That is, I can't believe she's complaining. Here's a text I sent a friend on or around day three. The little power generators are from Jackery. We're now charging hers via the SIG lighter. Mine is in back. Either the Jackery won't do output and input simultaneously, or there's a way to turn hers on that we don't know about. We have different models. About 20 minutes ago before we stop, Cheryl says, my phone battery is dead. Can I swap out the Jackery for a while? Her Jackery is up to 48%. Her. Big whine and obvious indication that this is not okay. Cheryl. Okay, well, I know we need to stay on this highway for a long time. Stop to pee, let the dogs out, etc. I plug my phone into my Jackery in the back. She agrees to drive for a half hour. She gets into the driver's seat. I have no not navigation. Me. It's charging in the back. Her. We'll bring it up here. Me. But it's dead and the lighter is charging your Jackery. I only have like 2% oh battery. My, she sounds so frustrated. Kick her, her out. Her. Well, I didn't know it was that low. Fine. I'll use mine. Now she's pissed because the charging cable is not there, but because it's in the back. She grabs my other one, which is USB-C for my iPad. Also pissed at that. Day five. Would you be pissed off if I hired an organizer for the camper? Me, incredulous. What? Yes. Why would you do that? Her. I found this bin up here and it's full of junk. Why don't you just throw it out? Why doesn't she throw it out? Day six. Because she's not a problem solver. No. Cheryl's a saint. Day six. This one, actually two, takes the cake. For context, everyone seems to have issues with something. Some people hate anything to do with eyes, etc. Personally, I am a bit emetophobic, though I did work somewhat through that in therapy. Her issues, in addition to from many, many things, apparently includes having her face near a toilet. Two nights before this, she was listening to an audible book where the narrator was very explicitly describing vomiting. That's not what us. Are you, I, That's not us. We do not talk about throw up on this show. No. Also, a few <laughs> nights ago, she complained that I was listening to a podcast with a guy who had a strident voice. Peter Sagal from Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me, which bothered her. I made a flippant comment later about not listening to people who were professionals. Wait, I thought she was going to say it was Sam or John. Oh, a metaphobic to aversity to barf. So this is what OP, uh, Cheryl has. Oh, oh, and I am so sorry for vomiting. making that vomiting noise because <laughs> maybe I just made you throw up. Oh, my God. Uh, I hope not. <laughs> Jesus. Okay, cake slice number one. I needed to poop and I asked her to put in earbuds or something so I could have some privacy. She first said no, but when I persisted, she said she never wanted to hear me say anything about strident voices again. <laughs> strident voices? Yeah, because she was like the guy. Peter Sagal has a strident voice to Cheryl. So weird. Weird. Cake slice number two. She hates the onboard bathroom and to her credit, it's no picnic, but it serves its purpose. But the campground bathroom was about 50 yards away. 
Anyway, I was dealing with stuff outside this morning and I guess she had to go. So she announced that she both peed and pooped in the camper bathroom. I congratulated her and asked if she had any issues figuring out how to flush it. She said no. And I said something about remnants and let her know where the toilet brush was. She said she refuses to clean the toilet. I reminded her that the brush is a handle. So it's not like her face will be close to the toilet. She still said no. I said I was not interested in cleaning up her shit. She says back that she has this issue. I don't expect her to lick it clean. And she Ugh. comments back that she pays people to clean her toilet. Note that when we left, I reminded her that I am not her employee. I told her to at least try flushing water down. Apparently that worked. No idea what will happen next time she what takes a shit. What a princess. She's a princess. What a princess. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Skyla Lewis, I would end this trip. Jem says, nope, yeah. leave her at the side of the road. Yeah. Bernie Hart Dragon says, poor Cheryl. Yeah, uh completely yeah. agree to her credit she has spotted on driving she's driving driven about five hours total so far i've driven about 30 it's okay. not a fair just, i don't know if that's i mean fair at, at least it's something uh, a couple days ago she scraped one of those protective concrete posts at a gas station and oh, no. seriously effed up the side of the camper no how much would it be the thing is she loaned me 10k to help me buy the camper so i kind of had to bring her along um, at this point i just want her to fly home see don't accept money from no. ass hats we did hash it that out that is a, a golden bit rule morning. of okop yeah. right there do not accept money from yeah. ass hats um we did hash it out a little bit this morning but i still don't feel that things are completely resolved because moments later the same behavior repeated I'm miserable. Help me. Okay, family. Cheryl. Oh, my goodness. Oh, babe. Oh, this, oh, oh. Uh, I am so sorry that you had to endure it. How, how, yeah. did, the, how did it end? Was did it, it end? like, Are you yeah. still on so this trip? An update in the Cheryl. Update. Wait, wait. Cheryl. Cheryl. Do you want to call our call line really quick at 440-508-6567? Hey, call. call yeah, yeah. Call Cheryl, Cheryl, call us right now. Cheryl. Cheryl. Cheryl, we're waiting Cheryl. for your call. Cheryl. Cheryl. Hello. Is this Hello. Cheryl? Yes. Yes. Ah! Hello, oh Cheryl. My God. How's it going? Okay. Oh my God. So here's what happened. Here's what just happened. Okay. okay. Yes. So okay. So so I'm in the Keys, Florida Keys. I drove from Wisconsin to the Keys. Oh my right. gosh. Wow. Holy. <laughs> how wow. many hours is that total? Like twenty-four. Sheesh. We made, we made a stop in Virginia. But so, so before we're getting to, on our way to here, because it's a long drive today. Yeah. So I said, hey, we should stop at a truck stop because we both needed a shower. The onboard shower is where I stack all my bins of artwork and shit. Right, because so, this is for the art stuff. tour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she goes, well, I really want to get to Key West so we can get settled. I said, well, we should stop at a truck stop so we can cold shower. Yeah. And do laundry. So we get there. She's so frustrated with not having a place to shower. She actually rented the car to go try to drive around and she's staying the next two nights in a hostel because she needed to shower and i'm like we could have gone to truck stop all right real but question money right so yeah i owe her ten thousand dollars now for this right camper. are you still friends with her oh yeah i mean we, we, <laughs> I said, well i'm staying friends with her until okay so my next until you have to pay back the money <laughs> Yeah, well, that's what I'm planning on doing. I have a home equity loan. I'm going to freaking pay her back, like, yeah. minus all, like, because she was going to split the gas and stuff with me. But my plan is, honestly, to, like, figure out the cost. And she starts up the side of the camper, like, pulling out of a gas station. And, like, it's just constantly, like, I'm I'm working my ass off. But she loaned me the money, so I felt like I you couldn't do it. To. She's talking about next time we're going to do that. I'm like, like no, we're going to be there next time, lady. Like, uh -uh. anyway, so my next three shows are around Tampa. And I'm oh, real, cool. I've been really trying to push. I've been saying, hey, you know, I feel like this is like bad for your health. Maybe you should go, you know, you should consider flying home. You know? So you're like, hey, yeah, you should maybe. maybe. You should Can you like leave? Yeah, I mean, I <laughs> what don't if you want left? to be a complete yeah. horrible person and say like, you know, I hate you, you know, because. Because yeah. she did I, help I, you I, out. I be kind. But it's, yeah. It's, in my life. Yeah. That, it, 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 is, it, it is a pickle. It is a pickle for sure. Yeah. Yeah, because, because, I mean, because she's stuck with me now, right? And I just, I, I, I mean, for the next two nights because she stayed in this hostel. Wait, but are you, didn't bring... is it still ongoing? Are you, like, there? Like, are you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Tomorrow's my first show. <gasps> and then I have Oh, like, this is, like, more. right now. This is happening yeah, right now. I'm just saying, oh, my God, I need to talk to you guys now because yeah. I don't know what to do. Yeah. Hopefully she's not here tonight. Oh, that's good. Because <laughs> she's staying at this freaking hostel so that she can shower. Oh, my. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, 
Okay. All right. So we're, 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 we're guys, we're getting like okay. live so we need, we advice. Need advice right, right this now. second. Yeah. Um, okay. So, all right, yeah. right, right. To, to, yes. to keep track of the situation, right? So a, a little, mm -hmm. uh, uh, a little background, right? So she lent you $10,000 to buy this camper van. Um, and yeah. then you are doing art shows. And you're going from mm -hmm. uh, the what, it was to Wisconsin to the to Florida, to the Florida Keys. Keys. Well, I start. We, so we both live in Wisconsin. So okay. the first show is in the Florida Keys. I got in Key West right now. Yeah. I set up the booth today with no help from her. By the way. Uh, yeah. Um, of course, right? Of course, of course. Um, and then she'll complain about how she she was so tired because she like she rented this car so she could go find a shower or whatever. And so she was talking about how exhausted she was. And when I complained because. Yeah, she's got. She's picky about her food, so she needed to go to some place like Outback to quote unquote get some vegetables in her, which was potatoes. And I'm like, potatoes are not a vegetable as far as nutrition goes, but whatever. And um, so I said, you know, this is kind of expensive. I can't really afford to do this. This divorce is costing a lot of money. Yeah. Like we're out of money. And I'm like, you know, can we? Do she goes, well, then you should be. Then you should fix the, update the water because I had not dewinterized my camper yet, so that you can cook. So now I I'm feel. Too. I feel like. <laughs> Like she, she's, I feel like she knows almost that she's like, I've given you this money. Yeah. And so she's using it almost as like this, like manipulation yeah. tactic. A maybe, little bit. maybe she um, has not brought it up. I will say that she's not okay. brought it up, but I feel like I feel with like how she's hanging over treating yeah. you, she's like, Oh, I'm expecting to be like a princess. I'm yeah. expecting you to do everything. And I'm expecting you just to take yeah. a back seat. And so I, I mean, I'm think kind of her, I, I, kind of her only friend is the problem right mm. and so and she has done like she she is the kind of person like she'll loan me her car like i needed to set up for it something sounds like she, she actually like she's a good friend but just because she like helps you out with these doesn't mean she can treat you poorly yeah and i think like right the the, the it, i feel like what the um the theme of this episode is is about boundaries yeah. like we were talking about like alex's uh, article yeah. earlier about yeah. like how to set boundaries and that doesn't necessarily mean that you're being ungrateful or anything no. you know it's like it's just the means that you don't want to be treated like that yeah. right so i think yeah maybe... and, I, and i said like, like one time i dropped her off um at uh so she could go in and get some snacks uh, and um like pulled around let the dogs out and then we should we bought these walking talking so yeah easily and she goes pick me up and I, I was like, oh, yes, ma'am. I said, and then, you know, and I had to like maneuver the camper to get it back out to drive around. And she was like, I was like, you could have just said, hey, I'm ready. Like the difference yeah. between pick me up and hey, yeah. I'm ready. And I, I brought that one up and she's like, I think oh, you gotta have okay. a conversation yeah. where you feel like, hey, I feel like a little disrespectful. Oh, I did. Yeah. yeah. I you did. had the conversation. Oh. She, she, she claims she's not being that way and that I need to understand her health issues. And I'm like, mm. I'm trying to understand your health issues. I really, and I, and I, and I don't, but I just because he has health issues doesn't, doesn't mean she gets, she gets, gets to disrespect you. Like, like maybe Thank that you. means yeah. that she's <laughs> not going to like be able to lift heavy things yeah. or or Perfect. drive exactly. as much. Yep. But that doesn't mean she gets to complain. And so yeah. I feel like right. like right. you <laughs> understanding the health issues is like okay, like that's why I drove yeah. thirty hours and yeah. you drove yeah. five. You know. And that's and and the thing is, if she wasn't here, it would actually be easier. For me, right? Yeah, because she yeah. wouldn't be taking yeah. up this down back back space. You know, like one of the things I sell are these little uh, sewn and quilted footstools, right? Um, and so they're all stored under my bed mm. um, in the back. And I said, hey, if I can I like hand these to you? You know, just put them over there so that it's easier instead of me having to go back and forth. And she's like, I can't do that. I was like, I think you can. And she's like, don't tell me what I can do. Don't tell me what my limitations are. I was like, mm. Oh my god! I can't. You know, like, yeah. I said, I see you hoisting your your bag up to the loft. Yeah. Like, there's a loft area. I'm like, Is I there, know that you can do that. Can you? So, like, some people <laughs> in the chat are saying, like, do do like 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 should we? Can we end the yeah. like like should I we think, end the 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 the, the trip? I was what do you gonna think, say, Sophia? like, maybe you could. Yeah. Yeah, you need the trip. Yeah, well, yeah. but like her, her involvement in the trip, yeah. rather. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That's what I'm hoping. I'm trying to make it her think that it's her idea and it's for her benefit and yeah. not because yeah. I'm I think... such a B word, <laughs> which, <laughs> yeah. you know, which I'm not. And I mean, I'm trying to be so considerate. And every once in a while, I break a little bit and I just I snap a little. Yeah. Because she's like... Like, like today, I, okay, this evening. So like I said, she went and stayed in this hostel so she could, like, shower. And I said, hey... Um, I, I texted her because she had rented a car to do this. Yeah. yeah. And I said, um, 
Um, I'm going to go. I have to go to Home Depot and pick up another table. Um, oh, because she, she said, oh, she had forgotten to grab a, a charger for her phone. And I said, if you want, I can stop by and, and you can grab the charger. And she goes, well, would it be too much trouble to ask you to pick up food? I'm like, actually, yeah, because, you know, parking in Key West, parking in 25 foot camper in Key West is a pain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I'm like, and she's, I'm exhausted. She's like, she's like acting like you're her butler and you yeah. are not her butler. No. Um, and, so yeah, I, that's the I, thing. So she, yeah. I think, I yeah. think like, if I was to give some like final advice, yeah. I think it would be probably have another conversation and maybe give her the out where it's like, do you uh, want to be on this trip? Do you want to be on this yeah. trip? Because how it's working right now is not working yes. for me. I, and yeah, I think like Squidney yeah. four five six says yes. it best. Don't be afraid of, to be a bitch for your mental health. Yeah. And like, yeah, and, sometimes I mean, you need to be a bad bitch for your mental end. health. You know? Yeah. I mean, I'll take money out of the home equity loan and pay her back. I just, I yeah. just want yeah. the, the the time till we get to You Tampa need your mental sanity. Be, yeah. You need your mental sanity. I, well, I don't want it to yeah. be unpleasant. You know, I don't want it to be like super stressful getting back to the mainland where I can take you to the airport. Yeah. But boundary I think this setting your boundaries this is yeah. yeah, this is a work trip and like also setting yeah. your boundaries I think is is will, will like will be better for you and oh, better for her. Yes. So I think that deserves yeah. another another conversation. Um, yeah, but because yeah, it didn't really change after the first one. I mean, it was yeah. like, oh my god, exactly. So that just yeah. means you need to have another conversation. Yeah. And it, yeah, I feel like it'll be if you yeah. want to continue yeah. this friendship. That's if you want to continue the center, I think that's the way. Build up resentment if yeah. you don't have the conversation. But I think yeah, and that's, I already told her. I said I, yeah. I I said I'm not having fun. Yeah, yeah. And this was supposed to be fun. Somewhat. Yeah. I mean, it was a lot to do, to do a five week trip for this first. This is my first time doing juried art shows, so yeah. it was like a big yeah. it's a big deal for me, you know. Well, actually, um, could could you do you want to shout out your your art for so the OK yeah. fam can can support? Sure. If you go to um, unspooled wi, that's my website. Unspooled, unspooled wi. wi. Okay, yeah, we'll like, check un, it out. U n s p o o l e d wi. Wi. Yeah, well, it has the wi in there. Awesome. Yeah. Well, Cheryl, I'll thank you so it. much for sharing your story thank on the you. show and being our yes, first live caller. That Woo. like like for the live thank show. That's crazy. So much and thanks for the sub Somebody thank you so of much of course thank you okay unspooled cheryl we'll talk to you soon thank you bye love you guys. bye love you bye. Bye. thank you ah! cheryl thank you Woo! i appreciate yeah. all of you guys yeah. appreciate cheryl for sharing your thank story you. thank you all so much for tuning in if you love us make sure to like this video right now right now subscribe. we'll give right you one video. minute we I love you and we'll see you tomorrow!